Hi friends, good morning. Welcome back to the Astra program 2022 presented by Akka IAS Academy. In this video, I will be dealing with 7 different questions based upon ratio and proportion and 3 reading comprehension questions. Okay, so let's begin. So first question is, in a zoo there are certain number of hens. Okay, there are certain number of hens and rabbits. The total number of heads when counted is 200 and the total number of legs is 580. Find the number of rabbits. Okay. Uh, interesting question friends. Okay. So uh, when you count the heads, when you count the heads, how much there is getting 200. Okay. And uh, when you count the legs, the number is 580. Okay. And there are two species that is rabbit which consists of four legs and hen which has two legs okay so this is the basic data uh, we have known here uh, I'll be solving it in the next page here see friends actually this can be solved in a single step only through allegation method okay through allegation method this can this question can be easily solved right see given data I have written so uh, the larger data is rabbit which is having four legs okay and the lesser data is hence that is two legs so uh, the mean will be uh, see weighted average will be I'll be calculating here weighted average weighted average will be 580 upon 200 so what is this 580 this 580 is legs and this is 200 is upon heads okay so the weighted average will be 580 upon 200 this 0 this 0 gets cancelled 58 by 20 so 58 by 20 is uh, 2.9 okay so the weighted average is 2.9 here so 4 minus 2.9 I'll be getting it as 1.1 here and 2 minus 2.9 I'll be getting it as 0 0.9 here okay so I in the single step only I got the uh, ratio here see 1 of 1 is 1.1 is to 0 0.9 when I multiply it with 10, so 11 is to 9, okay, I will be getting the ratio 11 is to 9, this is the required ratio here, so uh, hence, so hence 110, so how many legs will be there, 220, okay, uh, the population of hence is 110, and rabbit will be in the ratio 9, right, so 90 rabbits, so 9 for the 36, so 360, so 580 is the total amount uh, total legs okay leg leg count is 580 uh, and head count will be uh, 200 110 by 110 plus 90 that is 200 okay guys so uh, the population of hens is 110 and the rabbit is 90 so this is the solution for this question if at all you know the allegation method in a single step only you will be arriving to the problem so moving on to the next question given that a is to b is 3 by 3 is to 7 that is nothing but a by b will be 3 by 7 and the sum of a and b that is a plus b is no actually this is 45 correct the question here okay this is 45 a plus b will be 45 find the value of b so value of b is question mark here this can be calculated very very easy method okay in this uh, in the single step only you will be arriving to the answer so let a be 3x and b b 7x okay and they have given a plus b is 45 okay so 3x plus 7x that will be equals to 45 so x will be uh, 45 upon 10 so that is nothing but 4.5 x will be 4.5 so uh, b is 7x right 7x so 7 into 4.5 so that will be 31.5 this is the answer here simple question guys so moving on to the next question what must be subtracted from each term of the ratio 49 is to 58 so that it becomes 3 is to 4 okay uh, it's a tricky question but it's a, it's a very simple question okay what must be subtracted this we need to find out what must be subtracted from each term of ratio 49 is to 58 so that it becomes 3 is to 4 so we we'll, we shall assume let x be subtracted okay let x be subtracted from each term so i'll be writing here 49 minus x upon 
58 minus x this will be equals to 3 upon 4 see here very simple problem how we can solve it here is 49 upon x by 58 minus x is 3 by is to 4 so cross multiply 44 4 into 49 minus x 3 into 58 minus x okay so you'll be getting 196 minus 174 that will be equals to minus 3x plus 4x so x you will be getting uh, this will be x and 196 minus 174 that is 22 x will be 22 196 minus 174 is 22 and minus 3x plus 4x is x so x is 22 option b is the right answer here so we need to subtract uh, 22 from each term that is 49 and 58 so that it will become 3 is to 4 so moving on to the next question the sum of rupees 530 is divided among a b and c such that a gets 70 more than b okay this is first statement and b gets not gets it's b gets 80 more than c so what is the ratio of shares of a and c see in the next page i'll be solving this guys what is the given data here 530 rupees actually it is divided among a b and c okay so uh, a gets 70 more than b so a gets 70 more than b and b gets 80 more than c and b gets 80 more than c okay this is the uh, question here so what is the ratio of shares of a and c they have asked okay so let us assume that see b and b is common in both the uh, equation right so let us assume that b gets rupees x in the 530 okay let us assume that b gets x rupees okay therefore a will be getting rupees x plus 70 and c will be getting rupees x minus 70 okay this you understood guys this from this equation i have written here okay b will be 80 plus c though c will be nothing but b minus 80 okay uh, this is uh, actually uh, not 70 this is 80 here so x minus 80 okay upon adding this see three values i have got here right b b is x and a is this much value and c is this much value so this total amount 530 is being divided upon uh, in between these three variables right so i will be getting the equation here b plus x plus 70 a plus x minus 80 that is c that will be equals to 530 rupees see this is the total uh, rupees yes or no so upon solving this i'll be getting here uh, getting uh, getting this as 3x minus 10 that will be equals to 530 3x will be equals to 540 x will be equals to 540 upon 3 that is nothing but 180 okay guys so x is 180 here so the shares i'll be writing here okay a share is nothing but x plus 70 that is nothing but 180 plus 70 that will be 250 rupees and c share will be x minus 80 that will be equals to 180 minus 80 that will be 100 okay so a we have got 250 and c we have got 100 so a's share upon c's share that will be 250 upon 100 that will be 0 0 cancels for 25 by 10 is nothing but 5 by 2 this is the answer here simple right uh, see while see guys while actually explaining i'll be dealing it in the detailed format so you may find it bit lengthy process okay uh, when you know the concept uh, it will be very much easy you can skip or you can skip two or three steps while i'll be uh, what i have written here okay so then only you'll be arriving to the answer in a very easy for easy or uh, shortest method so try to make your calculations faster and try to uh, avoid using pen and paper wherever possible okay try to calculate in head it's in, in your mind itself so moving on to the next question a bag contains rupees 600 in the form of 1 rupee 50 paisa and 25 paisa coins in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 12 the number of 20 paisa coins is okay four options have been given i'll solve it in the next page here what is the given data here given data given ratio is 3 is to 4 is to 12 see the ratio has been given here okay what is this ratio there is actually a bag containing rupees 600 600 rupees is there in a bag and in the form of rupees there are one rupee note and 50 paisa coin 
and 25 paisa coin so how many 1 rupee how many 50 paisa how many 25 paisa we don't know but in total actually it leads to 600 rupees that we know okay so what the questions ask is the number of 20 pais 25 paisa coin is okay see here i'll be solving it here first we need to equate this ratio into a single value okay single value see here upon this ratio if at all 1 rupee is there so 3 rupees and 4 4 uh, 4 coins of 50 paisa is there nothing but 2 rupees see here 3 rupees is there and 2 rupees is there and 12 means 12 coins of 25 25 paisa each means actually 3 fours are 12 right so 4 coins makes 4 25 paisa coins makes 1 rupee so 12 divided by 4 is nothing but 3 so this is 3 rupees okay the value are different here 3 rupees 2 rupees and 3 rupees first we need to equate the value here okay so how we will be equating the value here the ratio are given as 3 by 1 is to 4 by 2 that will be equals to 12 upon 4 so by this uh, equating the value i'll be uh, getting the uh, same answer here right okay see here 3 is to 2 is to 3 so this is the new ratio upon equating the value here so this step is very important guys here okay you need to equate the value here okay then we can solve the questions here 3x plus 2x plus 3x that will be equals to total amount 600 rupees 6 uh, 3x 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 2 8x will be equals to 600 and x will be equals to 75 600 upon 8 that will be equal to 75 so uh, therefore the value of we have equated to value right value of 25 paisa coins that will be 75 into what is the ratio the ratio is 3 so value will be 225 rupees okay this is the value here so to get 225 rupees how many coins of 25 paisa is needed that we need to calculate here so 225 into 4 that will be 900 so there are 925 paisa coins in the 600 rupees 600 rupees of value okay guys so moving on to the next question four years ago father's age was six times that of his son 12 years from now father's age will be twice that of the son what is the present ratio of the father's and son age simple problem i'll be solving it in the next page see what you need to uh, uh, write first in the uh, problems related to ages is present past and future okay you need to make these three columns here present past and future so present age of son it shall be b x and father b y okay so in this statement four years ago okay 4 years ago means x minus 4 and y minus 4. So, 4 years ago, father's age was 6 times that of his son. Okay, father's age is y minus 4. That will be 6 times of his son. Son's age is x minus 4. See, first equation I have got here. Okay, so since after 12 years, the, the question also said second uh, condition. Uh, after 12, 12 years from now, father's age will be twice that of his son. So, tw 12 years from now means x plus 12 and y plus 12 okay father's age will be so y plus 12 will be uh, 2 times that of son's age that is 2 into x plus 2 so y plus 12 will be 2x plus 4 okay so this is the second equation i have got here y minus 2x minus 12 that will be equals to 0 this is the second equation i have got here so upon simplifying this first equation y minus 6x plus 20 that will be equals to 0 this is the first equation and this is the second equation here so upon equating these two equations i will be getting y minus 6x plus 20 that will be equals to 0 y minus 2x minus 12 that will be equals to 0 simply subtract here this will become addition changing the sign so y gets cancelled here so plus 2x and minus 6x will be minus 4x plus 12 and plus 20 will be plus uh, 32 okay for minus 4x plus 32 will be 0 here and then 4x my we shall be here that will be equals to minus 32 so minus minus gets cancelled x will be equals to 32 upon uh, 4 that will be 8 okay x will be 8 here okay so what is x present age of sun is 8 okay so uh, what they have asked to find out the ratio 
ratio will be ratio of fathers and sons age right fathers and sons age if at all x is z then y will be y will be uh, substitute the value of x in one of the equations okay then y will be getting 28 here so uh, 28 upon 8 is the ratio that is nothing but 7 is to 7 by 2 or 7 is to 2 this is the answer here okay a simple question moving on to the next question in a mixture of 180 liters the ratio of milk and water is 2 is to 1 the ratio of milk and water is 2 is to 1 okay what they have given mixture mixture or total volume that is 180 liters right so ratio of milk is to water how it will be 2 is to 1 ratio of will be 2 is to 1 so total will be 3 right in 3 parts 2 parts is milk and water is 1 part the first question states that if the ratio of milk and water is to be 1 is to 2 then the amount of water to be added is so the new ratio they are telling right so if at all the ratio is this much how much uh, uh, water need to be added okay see in the next page I'll be solving here see what uh, what is the data given here mixture that will be uh, volume total volume that will be equals to 180 liters okay the for 180 liters the ratio is present ratio of milk is to water that will be 2 is to 1 this is the ratio here so upon seeing this only we can say that total parts is 3 2 is to 1 means total parts 3 so what is the total volume 180 so 180 divided by 3 is nothing but 60 so one part is 60 so what is the ratio of milk and water here so milk is to water is 2 is to 1 so 16 to 2 that is what 120 and 1 is 60 so 120 plus 60 that will be 180 total volume so milk is 180 liters and water is 60 liters so this data we got here right okay now what amount of water uh, should be added shall be taken as x okay now x liters of water is added water shall be added to make the ratio to make the ratio 1 is to 2 so this will be I'll be writing the equation right here see milk is there milk we know 120 liters is there okay so upon water initial water will be 60 liters so plus x liters of water is been added to make the ratio 1 upon 2 so when you uh, get to know to write this equation then solving for x will be easy here okay 120 into 2 is 240 so 60 plus x so x will be 180 okay x will be 180 so 180 liters of water must be added to make the ratio 1 is to 2 that is the simple uh, answer guys okay moving on to the next question so this is dealing with the passage here an air quality index AQI is a way to combine measurements of multiple air pollutants in a single number or rating okay this index is ideally kept constantly updated and available in different places the air quality index is most useful when lots of pollution data are being gathered and when pollution levels are normally but not always low in such cases if pollution levels spike for a few days the public can quickly take preventive action like staying indoors in response to a air quality warning unfortunately that is not urban india Pollution levels in many large Indian cities are so high that they remain well above any health or regulatory standard for a large part of the year. If our index stays in the red or dangerous region day, day after day, there is not, not much anyone can do other than getting used to or used to it or ignoring to it. Okay, so this is the passage here. So what is the question here? Which among the following is most logical and rational inference? Okay. The question talks about the inference here that can be made from the above passage here okay so uh, first statement our governments are not responsible enough to keep our cities pollution free in the passage nowhere it is dealing with the governments or government's responsibility of uh, 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 taking pollution under the control okay so option a is negated here okay so then uh, there is absolutely no need for air quality indices in our country 
वी शैल कम टू दिस स्टेटमेंट इन अ बिट लेटर टाइम ओके एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स इज नॉट हेल्पफुल टू द रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ मेनी ऑफ अवर लार्ज सिटीज ओके तो दिस कैन बी इन्फर्ड फ्रॉम द पैसेज आई एल ऑल्सो चेक द फोर्थ स्टेटमेंट इन एवरी सिटी पब्लिक अवेयरनेस अबाउट पॉल्यूशन प्रॉब्लम शुड इंक्रीज ओके नो वेयर इन द पैसेज दे आर टेलिंग अबाउट द अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम शुड बी इन द शुड बी टेकन अप इन द सिटी सो दैट द पब्लिक गेट्स अवेयर ऑफ ओके दिस दिस डी स्टेटमेंट्स ऑल्सो कैन बी नेगेटेड हियर सो चेकिंग इन चेकिंग इन बिटवीन बी एंड सी स्टेटमेंट्स बी स्टेटमेंट्स देर इज अब्जुलटली नो नीड फॉर एयर क्वालिटी इन दिस इज ऑन आवर कंट्री अब्जुलटली नो नीड ओके दिस इज द एक्सट्रीम स्टेटमेंट हियर ओके absolutely no need no this is the extreme statement and it also contradicts with the main idea of the passage since b can be also ruled out so option c is the right answer here moving on to the next passage productive jobs are vital for growth and a good job is best form of inclusion okay more than half of our population depends on agriculture but the experience of other countries suggests that the number of people dependent on agriculture will have a shrink if per capita income in agriculture are to go up substantially okay while industry is this statement you need to uh, take it very clearly guys okay what is this statement here uh, actually uh, uh, but the experience of other countries suggests that number of people dependent on agriculture will have a shrink okay we'll have a shrink depend on agriculture we'll have a shrink if per capita income per capita income in agriculture are to go up substantially okay while industry is creating jobs too many such jobs are low productivity non culture non contractual jobs in the unorganized sector offering low incomes little protection and no benefits service jobs are relatively of high productivity but employment growth in services has been slow in recent years so this is the passage here so what is the question which among the following is the most logical and rational inference that can be made from the above passage okay see four statements i'll be examining here we must create conditions for faster faster growth of highly productive service jobs to ensure employment growth and inclusion okay in the passage in the last few uh, sentences it is been said that service jobs are relatively of high productivity but employment growth in service has been slow in recent years okay so uh, option a is uh, most probable option we also need to check the other three options we must create conditions for the faster growth of highly productive service jobs to ensure employment growth and inclusion so this is the uh, relatable this statement is relatable to the uh, passenger we also will be checking with option b c and d why uh, if it uh, then which is the most probable option will be selecting here okay we must shift the farm workers to highly productive manufacturing and service sectors to ensure the economic growth in the inclusion growth and inclusion okay the passage do speaks about the agricultural sector manufacturing sector and service sector but nowhere in the passage we can uh, get to the point that we must shift the farm workers okay this shift the farm workers to a highly productive manufacturing no this can be negated here so option b is wrong here we must create conditions for faster growth of productive jobs outside of agriculture even while improving the productivity of the agriculture no actually this statement is also uh, wrong here okay option c is too generalistic and even far fetched okay uh, uh, we must create conditions there is no way, nowhere in the passage we can infer we must create conditions for the faster growth of productive jobs outside agriculture no this is no actually this sentence has been negated the, no in in the passage it is actually uh, far fetched we cannot infer this statement here okay we must emphasize the cultivation of high yielding hybrid oh, high yielding or hybrid varieties nowhere in the question only nowhere in the passage right so option a is the most probable and right option here okay so you need to check the each and every option then only you can come to a, a most logical conclusion guys okay so moving on to the next passage the medium term challenge for indian manufacturing is to move from lower to high tech sectors higher tech sectors from lower to higher value added sectors and from lower to higher productivity sectors medium tech industries are primarily capital intensive and resource processing and high tech industries are mainly capital and technological in, in, uh, intensive 
in order to push the share of manufacturing in overall GDP to projected 25%, the in Indian manufacturing needs to capture the global market in sectors showing a rising trend in demand. These sectors are largely high technologically and capital intensive. So what is the question here? Which among the following is most logical and rational inference that can be made from the above passage? Okay. India's GDP displays high value added and high productivity levels in medium tech and resource processing industries. See friends, in the passage what they have given here, given this, medium tech industries are primarily capital intensive and resource processing. Okay. Nowhere in the passage it has been said about the high productivity levels in medium tech and resource processing industries. Okay. So option A is wrong here. So uh, promotion the second option would be promotion of capital and technology intensive manufacturing is not possible in India. No, this cannot be inferred because it's an extreme statement is not possible is an extreme statement. Okay, so this can also be negated here. See in the passages actually uh, when you when you come across with the extreme statement in the in not in all the cases in most of the cases it does the that option will be wrong. Okay. So India should push up the public investments and encourage the private investments in research and development technology uh, in research and development technology upgradation and skill development. Okay. India should push up the public investments. Okay. This uh, and encourage the private investments. I will also check with the uh, last statement. India has already gained a great share already gained a great share in global markets in sector showing a rising trend in demand no, no this is wrong here already gained a great share no this is wrong here so option c is the right answer here okay guys so uh, this is it for today guys thank you uh, thank you for staying for such a long time uh, if at all you find this video informative kindly do share and subscribe to our channel akka is academy and also do like and leave a comment if possible guys okay uh, it tries it tries to motivate us okay uh, we shall meet up in the next video thank you god bless you all